Good afternoon YouTube. This is Johnny. Thought I'd make a video because it's been at least, I don't know, 24 hours. So I'm sitting in my study, my main study, because my wife is in the living room reading for her woman, her woman's, no, her book club. And I don't know when I'll be, make, be able to make a video. Tonight, my wife does go to a women's Bible study, but our oldest son, who lives down the street, Caleb, is coming over for dinner, and then he is going to, he has built a new computer for us, and he's going to install that. And he's going to bring over little Ollie, their new puppy. So... I won't be able to make a video tonight. Tomorrow morning, I go to my physical. Then we're going to go out for breakfast. And the day will go by. I don't think my wife works until... She works Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So tomorrow is a Thursday. Today is May the 1st, 2019. In the death flow. Yeah, here in uh, West Michigan, today it is raining. It's 50 degrees. It's gray. It's damp. Rain soaked. This morning, uh, we went to grocery shopping, my wife and I. It always, when I, we go grocery shopping, my wife and I were just totally overwhelmed with the realizing how richly we are blessed because. We deserve nothing, and yet we are just heaped upon riches, uh, God's mercies in His grace. It's just, just staggers my mind because we deserve nothing, and yet we are given so much. So, uh, what this video is, it's today is a Wednesday. It is twelve fifty nine in the afternoon here. In it is May the 1st. It is a Wednesday. It's 69 degrees inside the Hermit Hut. It is going on 1 o'clock. And I did a video on what I plan to read throughout the month of May. A bird just hit the window and freaked me out. <laughs> I jumped. A bird just flew into my study window. So this is my study. You've probably seen my study. See the books. The clock, see it's going on one o'clock. There's Jack Kerouac, James Joyce. Uh, uh, stuff up there. Up there, you see. Those are CDs, my music collection. Yeah, so a bird hit, hit the window. They're always hitting the kitchen window. And I don't know, something must be chasing them. Maybe there's a hawk out there. So here, I'm sitting here, writing in my diary. I'm on page 384. And the point I was saying is I done, I've done a video about what I'm going to read throughout the month of May. And I just mentioned secular books. I didn't mention any of my Christian books, what I'm reading in the mornings for devotions or just throughout the day. Because I was waiting for this book to come in the mail, and I've mentioned it. This is the Reformation Commentary Series. I've shown these, I've been getting this for oh, several years now. And I just got this one, Romans 1 through 8, in the Reformation Commentary Scripture. Uh, Guinevere Walters Adams edited it. And they came out with this in 2016, uh, Romans 9 through 16, and I've been waiting to get Romans 1 through 8 because last, there was March Mammoth. <laughs> we're already through the month of April and we're going into May. Well, in March, for March Mammoth, I was reading and I still am reading, and I've been waiting for that Romans 1 through 8 to come. I've been reading Longnecker's, Richard Longnecker's Epistle to the to the, to the Romans and the New International Greek Commentary. So I've been reading this. If I was waiting, 
because I want to read the Reformation commentary up until where I stopped in the raw in the law necker and I stopped on chapter 3 verse 22 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read Romans 1 through 8 in the Reformation commentary up until chapter 3 verse 22 which is this these many pages so I got to read about 177 pages and then when I'm up to date, then I'll read both side by side, the Reformation and the, the Lawnnugger commentary. And that's what I'll do. But besides that, I got in the mail also. Now, I was reading, I remember I showed this one. I've been reading in the mornings, Righteous by Promise of Biblical Theology of Circumcision by Carl Din Dinnick. Well... I got this one in the mail too, along with the Reformation commentary, this new one in the series. These are the new studies of biblical theology. This is All Things New, Revelation is Canonical, Capstone. So now I, I've been reading this one too, and I will be reading it. So I'll be reading these. And then I'm still reading Gregory the Great, more reflections on the book of Job, volume five, books. 20 through 27. And I've been reading uh, Preaching Romans, The Four Perspectives. I'm almost done with this. I'm on the last pages in this one. And I've been reading in the mornings for devotions, Reform, Systematic Theology, Revelation in God, Volume 1, by Joel Beakey and Paul M. Smalley. So I'm reading Reformed Systematic Theology in the mornings. And I will be reading uh, All Things New, a Revelation as a Canonical Capstone by Brian J. Tabb. I'll be reading Righteous by Promise, a Biblical Theology of Circumcision by Carl Dinnick. Reading Gregory the Great, more reflections on the book of Job, volume 5, 23 to books 23 to 25. I'm almost halfway through this, if I read this. And I've been reading, I'll be reading Romans 1 through 8 in the Reformation Commentary Scripture. And uh, reading Preaching Romans for Perspectives. So that's what I plan to read in the mornings. I, I do got a book coming in the mail this afternoon, but it will be, uh, it's a memoir called The Light Years by Chris Rush that somebody in BookTube recommended. So I ordered it and it'll be coming in the mail this afternoon. So not much else going on here. Like I said, I've been reading... Uh, um, Romans 8. I read last night the introduction to this, introduction to Romans 1 through 8, and then uh, I was reading the, the commentary on Romans 1 through 8, and you have an overview. Uh, you know, like when you read these Reformation commentaries, what they are is that they quote from the Anabaptists. Catholics, Puritans, Protestant reformers, uh, the Puritans, and they quote them um, where they they said something about one of the about Romans one, or Romans two, or Romans three, and a lot of these men wrote commentaries on Romans, and they translate them out of Latin into English and put them in this book form. But Martin Luther, the German reformer, he wrote, he was very famous. That's how he came to the doctrine of justification by faith, by faith alone, by lecturing through Romans. And it says right here, like there's a quote from Martin Luther, the most important piece in the New Testament, Martin Luther. This letter is truly the most important piece in the New Testament. It is pure as gospel talking about Romans, Epistle of Romans. It is well worth a Christian's 
while not only to memorize it word for word, but also to occupy himself with it daily as though it were, were the daily bread of his soul. It is impossible to read or to meditate on this letter too much or too well. So, like, that's why I've been been meditating and reading and studying Mo Romans for, <laughs> I've been a Christian going on 49 years. The more one deals with it, the more precious it, precious it becomes and the better it tastes. <laughs> Therefore, I want to carry out my service and with this preface provide an introduction to the letter insofar as God gives me the ability so that everyone can gain the fullest possible understanding of it. Up to now, it has been darkened by glasses and by many useless comment, but it is of itself a bright light, um, almost bright enough to to illumine the entire scripture. We find in this letter then the richest possible teaching about what a Christian should know, the meaning of law, gospel, sin, punishment, grace, faith, justice, Christ, God, good works, love, hope, and the cross. We learn how we are to act toward everyone, toward the virtuous and the sinful, toward the strong and the weak, friend and foe, and towards ourselves. Paul bases everything firmly on Scripture and proves his points with examples from his own experience and from the prophets, so that nothing could be, could, nothing more could be desired. Therefore, it seems that Saint Paul, in writing this letter, the Epistle of Romans, wanted to compose a summary of the whole of Christian and evangelical teaching that would also be an introduction to the whole of the Old Testament. Without doubt, whoever takes this letter to heart possesses the light and power of the Old Testament. Therefore, each and every Christian should to make this letter the habitual and constant object of their study. God grant us, grant us his grace to do so. Amen. Preface to the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. So, so that's when, but when he says here, it is impossible to read or meditate on this letter too much or too well. The more one deals with it, the more precious it becomes and the better it tastes. So you can have an intellectual, intellectual reading and studying of Romans, but you've got to taste it. Taste the riches of the gospel that is set forth, the gospel of God. That's what Paul says in the first verse of Romans, chapter 1. He says... Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with, with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship, for obedience to the faith among all nations, for his name among whom we, who also are the called of Jesus Christ. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. He also says in chapter 1 of Romans, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also the Gentiles. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed, from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So that's what I'm reading in the mornings, the meditating and reading and studying and on the Epistle of Romans, reading Gregory the Great, more reflections on the book of Job, reading about righteousness by faith, the biblical theology of circumcision, and reading about revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the capstone of uh, canonical capstone. This is on the revelation of Jesus Christ, the last book of the New Testament. And yeah, and reading some Reformed Systematic Theology by Dr. Beakey and, John, and Paul Smiley, Revelation and God. I'm still here on Special Revelation. I'm on page 345, The Properties of the Written Word, Part 1. 
So that's what I'll be reading throughout the month of May and probably going into June, <laughs> July, and August. So yeah, today is a Wednesday in the middle of the week, first day of the month, first day of the month of May. So I hope you have a having a good week, that you have a good month of May, a good week of reading. Thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments. And until next time, bye.